Okay, this is the fifth and final tutorial on Adobe Spark. This tutorial will demonstrate how to use Adobe Spark in the online version. So whether you're using a laptop, a Mac or a PC, you can access Adobe Spark online and you can edit posts for the web or for print in exactly the same way as you would on the application. So let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so I'm starting a project on the online version of Adobe Spark Post. Unfortunately, they have not got the text animation feature yet, uh, but that will be coming soon. Uh, so I'm gonna click Start from Scratch, and I'm going to select a graphic. And I'm not gonna start with branding, I'm gonna start from scratch, and I'm gonna choose my size as the square, and click Next. I'm gonna skip this because I don't want any photos and I am going to start from here. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of this text that's here already. In fact, no, I'm going to edit that and I'm going to change that to what I want it to be. So I'm going to replicate a image that I've already made previously just for demonstration purposes. So running man is what I want. Now I want to align this left and I want to change the font to Monoton Regular. There we go. Okay, now let's enlarge this and bring this up to the top corner. And I want to take away the background. So I'm going to go to Shape. I'm going to scroll up and click None. And then I'm going to put it to the extreme top right corner. Enlarge this a little bit. Okay. Uh, the next thing I want to do, I want to change the background. So I'm going to change it to no background. And I am going to add an icon. So I'm going to click Add, go to Icon, and type in Run. And I would like this Running Man here. Okay, so I have my Running Man here. I'm going to enlarge him. And I'm actually going to flip him horizontally so that he's facing the other way. Okay, so let me enlarge this running man a bit more and bring him to about here. And what I'm going to do now is create a kind of uh, shadowy effect. So as if to show the motion of the man running. Um, so I'm going to duplicate him and I'm going to align him and shift him over to the left a little bit so that his head overlaps slightly with the other head. And I'm going to shift him back in order to the back. And I'm going to change his color. Or should I change it? No, I'm not going to change the color. I'm actually going to change the opacity. So I'm going to go back to icon. I'm going to bring him down to 70%. Okay, and now I'm going to duplicate him again. And I'm going to bring him over again so the head slightly overlaps. And I'm going to bring him to the back. And I'm going to bring his down to 50% opacity. OK, hopefully you can see what I'm aiming for here. I'm going to duplicate it again. And I'm going to bring him over, head slightly overlap. Bring him to the back of the queue, so he's in the back. And I'm going to bring his opacity down to, say, 40. And again, I'm going to repeat this one more time and bring him over so his head is slightly overlapping. Now that it's reached the edge, I'm happy. I've got enough of the running man, and I'll bring him over. And the opacity, I'll drop it down to 30. Okay, so here we have the um, kind of trailing running man image. Now, I actually want to select all of them and move them, move their position. Now, on the um, iPad, you can do this by selecting multiple. On a computer, naturally, we would select one and we would hold shift and select the others. Now, because they all have a trailing piece at the bottom, that's the area that I'm going to click on so that I can select the next one. So shift and click, shift and click. Shift and click, shift and click. Now you can see I've selected all of them. I can move them all at the same time. 
Now, in doing so, I'm going to just shift them to the bottom so the roundedness of the um, the last one is not seen, just so that it kind of looks like it's running from the edge and he hasn't started from the point on the page. Um, I'm happy with that. I'm going to click there and I'm going to insert an image to the background. So I would like to add image or photo and now I'm going to search three photos. Um, retro is a search because I feel it fits in with the theme that we have and I like this one here, the uh, bike. Okay, now it seems like there's a bit too much going on here with the text and with the man. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to filters. Uh, I think maybe if I select lighten. Okay, that's a bit better. Now what I'm going to do is actually I'm going to blur this out. Um, in fact, I'm going to blur this out fully because I don't really need, there's too much going on. I've got lines in the writing, I've got lines in the background, I've got the trailing lines from the running man. So what I want to do is I just want to blend this all into one so that we get the general color of the background. Uh, so we know that there's a difference between the wall and the floor uh, and that is still prevalent in the image. And I think that's it, I'm happy with that. Um, so I will click on the text, and maybe change the color of that slightly. Um, so here, let's bring this a bit more, just to bring it out on the image a bit more, and save that, and that is it. Okay, so that is how to use the uh, duplicate and opacity effect to give the impression of motion in an image. Okay, so that wraps up the series on how to use Adobe Spark Post, both in the app version and online. If you haven't checked out any of the other videos, go back and have a look at those. There are four other videos that teach you how to use Adobe Spark Post on the mobile device. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe if you enjoy what you've seen. We'll see you next time on OC's Tech Tips.